So today we're looking at a 2002 Grand Am with a 3.4 liter V6 engine in it. Basically, the speedometer's not working on it, and I'm getting a code P502, which typically is the transmission speed sensor, which is that sensor right down there on the passenger side, right by the CV axle on the output side of the transmission. Hopefully you can kind of see that. It's uh, let's see if I can point to it down here. That sensor right, right there. Pretty easy to replace. That's typically the issue. I've already replaced it. It's about a $12 sensor. Um, however, that didn't fix it. So we're gonna have to do some more diagnostic work to figure out if it's wiring or if it's something in the transmission or what's going on. When I got this car, several of the spark plug wires have been chewed like there's a mouse in it and you can kind of see some of the remnants on the O2 sensor wiring. The O2 sensor is not throwing a code right now, um, but you can definitely tell something chewed on those. So I would assume it was a wiring issue, but I can't find any wires that are chewed. So do some more diagnostic by first disconnecting that sensor and hooking up either a voltmeter or a oscilloscope to it. Okay, so here we are underneath the car. Uh, the sensor I was talking about is right here. Really close up video because I'm looking at the car lifted off the ground about a foot or so. So I'm gonna disconnect the sensor cable. So we're gonna go ahead and hook up our oscilloscope. And after I do this, I'll kind of show you a better video how the oscilloscope works um, from the top side of the car. So how the sensor should function is basically send us a pulse. I've read basically four pulses per revolution of the transmission or something like that. So it's going to send us multiple pulses per revolution. And that's what we're looking at. And that's what that code means is basically we're not getting enough pulses for what we think we should be seeing. Just rigged up two alligator clip or two spade clips. Had to cut them down a little bit. Just to make sure they're not touching, I've got insulated ones. Um, so I got those up there. Uh, serves kind of two purposes. I can actually be out from under the vehicle when I'm running the tire. And uh, makes it nice and easy to clip up in there and make sure they're clipped. So we're going to come out and actually hook up the oscilloscope now. Okay, so we've got our oscilloscope up, hooked up. You can kind of see here's the negative wire hooked up and the positive wire. And then here's our oscilloscope. So right now we're not reading anything, which is good, because obviously it's not spinning. And we're going to go ahead and start the car and see if we re start reading anything. So that's reading, that's what we're supposed to be doing. So each peak is basically a, an impulse, and that's what we're supposed to be seeing. So you can kind of see when the car is stopped here in a second. As you can kind of see, those waves stop going. So the transmission is outputting the signal. The sensor is good. Basically, we're going to have to work our way back from the sensor now. So I don't have a wiring schematic or a pinout of PCM or anything. So to find out where those wires go exactly, I know they come through the bottom side of the engine like this. And I'm assuming they come up to here. Um, not sure exactly so we're going to take the air box off and everything to get a little bit better access so to do that basically just pop that off here pop the mass airflow sensor off take the throttle cables loose here so you can get to that I need to go ahead and loosen this hose clamp here so that we can get the air box off So that's loose, should just pop off. And then there'll be two bolts on either side here that you'll have to take off. I've already taken those off. Um, so basically there's one down here and one over here. And once you take those off, this will just pop right out. And then there's another sensor right in here you have to take off and it comes out. So progress has been pretty slow, removing all the ducting and stuff, but 
here's the two wires I've traced so far from that sensor down below all the way up to here. And it looks like it's running to the fuse box. I'm going to try to release that to release it. It looks like it, you know, slides forward and back pretty easily, but it doesn't want to come. There's actually a little tab underneath. If you stick your hand up into here, you press on that, you can kind of feel it. It's kind of towards the front, more towards this bracket here. Um, you can push that up and then hopefully it'll slide out. So I'm going to try and tempt that really quick. So you can see we got that out. But however, these wires don't look like they're actually going to it like I expected. But now that I got it out of the way, I can see that the wires are actually going into the engine compartment, I would expect. So, or into the cab. So we're going to go into the cab and that comes right by the gas pedal there see if we can find the wires inside okay so here's the PCM connections underneath the drivers dash I've already started taking them apart the one towards the passenger side is the PCM connector number two the one on the right hand or the driver's side is the PCM connector one which is where the low and high speed vehicle or low and high input for the vehicle speed sensor go in on pin 64 and 65 I believe so we're gonna have to take this off to take this off basically I don't know if you have to take this one off or not it probably will help take it off basically the same as this one you take this bolt loose here and it'll actually pop down and then to take it all apart this connector was covering these wires here and just to make it easier basically you take this cover it'll slide off the front that way these wires here will come down and out and then these tabs here hold it on and you can take those out to expose expose all this okay so with that first connector out or the second connector out i can actually get the pcm all the way down into the plain view and you can kind of see 64 and 65 are where those wires come in from the vehicle speed sensor. So we're going to see if we can take those out, connect everything back up to PCM, and see if we still get that sine wave back here. Um, if not, obviously something is going on wiring-wise between here and the vehicle speed sensor. If we get it back here, then we're going to have to test out and see. Probably the PCM's bad, but we're going to have to test it out and see. So. Okay, so we've got the PCM hooked back up there. Um, got both connectors on it. Here are our two wires hooked to our oscilloscope. Again, we've got the positive wire hooked to the yellow. And our reference hooked to the purple. So we got our oscilloscope right here. We'll go ahead and turn it on. Okay, so we have it in drive, and the wheels are spinning, but we're not getting any pulses up here. So obviously, it's not probably the PCM, it's a wiring issue, so obviously there's a break in the wire somewhere, so we'll have to figure that out. Okay, well, I just ended up having to pull on these a little bit, and it broke, it came out, so obviously there was a short right there. So we're going to find the other side of that wire and connect it back up and see if we have a speedometer again. So I flew another wire down there, couldn't connect the two, it's in an awkward spot. So basically I had to take another section of wire and splice it together. Uh, not ideal, but it'll work. Start the car. And then put it in drive. And we're gonna go. So there we go. We now have a sine wave. That is a good sign. If we speed up, hit the gas, it should increase in pulses, and it's doing exactly that. And if we stop, the pulses go away. 
So that is exactly what we're looking for. So we just had to shorten that wire. We're gonna go ahead and connect everything back up and we'll see if we have a speedometer. So as you can see, this red wire is the wire I had to come down and connect in with the yellow wire down here because I could not get the wires connected. Not ideal, but it's gonna work temporarily until I can replace that wire harness. So for right now, we'll see if it works. Okay, so we got everything hooked back up. Here's the first drive we're gonna take. We don't have an engine light anymore. Cleared that fault. We'll see if it comes back, but it does look like the speedometer is starting to creep up, so that's a good sign. Have a speedometer and it shifts nice and smooth again. I think we found our issue.